This is a tutorial on how to sync your iCloud photos automatically every day uh, or more often to your TrueNAS Scale server. Um, on TrueNAS Scale, you'll just need to go to Apps and go to Available Applications and make sure you have the True Charts catalog installed. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description on how you can do that. It's really simple. It just takes a little waiting time. But then once you've done that, you'll have, you should have many apps available in your catalog to install. Search for custom and you'll have custom app come up. We're going to install the custom app. This custom app lets us specify any Docker image to basically run as a true, true NAS scale app. Uh, so the application name, I'm going to call it iCloud PD. This can be any application name you want it to be. The container repository, I'll leave the link in the description. It's this Docker container. And we'll use latest tag. Uh, we can skip controller configuration. Set your time zone. Um, uncheck these enable probes, we don't need those. And you'll need to add some container uh, in image environment variables. Uh, we'll need six, seven, we need seven. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll need Apple ID. And this is gonna be your Apple ID email address. The next one is the user. This is the username of the user you want this app to run under. Uh, I'm just gonna use apps, the built-in apps user that uh, is in TrueNestScale. User ID is going to be the ID of this user that you specified. So um, for that one, it's 568. That's the built-in TrueNest user ID. Then we're gonna specify group, same thing, apps, and group ID is also the same for 568. Um, then you need to specify time zone, TZ. Just use whatever your time zone value is. And then download path is going to be slash downloads. This value will map to the folder that we mount in a, in a couple of steps down. So we go to networking. I think simple would work but I haven't tried it yet. Just use cluster, or I've been using cluster and that works. You have to specify a target port. I would say just choose any port for these that is not currently in use. You don't actually use these ports for this container. It's just here as part of the default config for a custom app. Uh, storage persistence. This is where we're gonna specify two storage um, locations. One is for your config files. I'm going to store, this is your application, th this application's configuration folder. Um, you could use PVC storage type if you want to, but I would recommend using host path so that you can, um, so the container is a little more ephemeral. So I'm going to put it in uh, mount primary apps iCloud P. And the mount path that we're going to mount it to is going to be uh, slash config. This is a built-in path that you have to use that, um, that that Docker image expects for you to use. The next one's going to be our downloads folder. We're going to specify the mount point is slash downloads, which is what we used earlier. We, we told it that in the environment variable, we want to use slash downloads as our downloads folder. And then any mount point you want, you want to use um, in your, on your host. So mine is uh, downloads. All right, then we're gonna go next. Skip ingress. Here on security and permissions, unfortunately you need to do this. Check this box, uncheck run as non-root so that you can set these to zero. This isn't the best security wise to run on TrueNest scale, but some apps still require this because of the way their Docker images work. I think, I'm not entirely sure. Resources and devices, nope. Uh, and that should be all the last things that we need.
Okay, now we're gonna save it and this will, oh right, I forgot. Um, this path doesn't actually exist yet in my server. I need to add it really quick. So I just um, created that folder in my in a shell on my TrueNAS, uh, and then changed the ownership for the folder to apps, so it's not as root. Actually, it shouldn't matter because uh, this is going to be running as root, so it should be fine either way. But that's the normal way I set all of the app folders up. Uh, once you've done that, you can ignore everything else. Just come back to confirm and just click save again. Once the folder exists, it should be able to uh, create it. Cool. Now uh, we're going to go to install the applications. Um, and here's our iCloud PD. It's deploying right now. Um, if you want, you can click refresh events and kind of wait until it uh, comes up. Normally the first time it'll take a moment as it downloads the uh, Docker images that it needs to build. Uh, once you see it get to about this point where it says it started it, you can close it. Uh, it should turn it to act, turn to active fairly shortly. And if it doesn't, you can click on logs and see why. Um, sometimes this part goes slow for me and I have to refresh the page. So again, just click on the little dots and go to shell. Just click choose. We don't need to really change anything there. So this is the this is the command line inside the iCloud PD container. What we need to do is run slash. Uh, let's see, is it user bin? User local. User local bin iCloud sync. Oops, sorry, it's sync dash iCloud. Thankfully, this shell does have tab completion, so that does make it easier to type this. And we'll go to initialize dot s, uh, no, dash dash initialize. This will start the login process for the container. So it will take that username the Apple ID you gave it in the beginning. <clears throat> Once it sets up all the basic stuff for itself, it'll say, enter your password. So this will be your iCloud password. Uh, yes, save the password in the key ring, because that is convenient. And then Tell it you want to receive the SMS or whatever uh, method you're using to get the iCloud uh, two-factor authentication going. So you should receive a SMS on your device. You might have to do validation first. Uh, it kind of depends. Um, sometimes it will ask you to do the two-factor authentication, in which case you need to enter the the oh actually no I think you only ever enter the SMS code here okay here we go so if you enter the SMS code it will get started and then it'll say this other option enter the two-factor authentication code if you push if you you want to do that next and this will be the part where you're your device is giving you like a modal pop-up that says sign in requested and you have to push allow and then it gives you a six digit code that's not in the SMS. This is the part where you type in that code.
This part's always a little confusing. This is the first time I've ever gotten it right the first time. Um, I usually mix up which thing it wants me to do first. Um, if you get it wrong, you can just run the script again and, uh, and try again. Um, but if you get this, then you should be good. Your sync is now successful. So that means it will start syncing once the mounted special file is created. This is a file that you create in the downloads folder that tells this script that your drive is ready to go. Go ahead and start downloading files. If it doesn't exist, the script will just sort of wait in a loop until it does exist. This helps prevent like an offline an unplugged USB drive causing it to like fill up your root hard drive space with a bunch of photos when you didn't mean for it to. Um, an easy way you can do this is just go to uh, slash downloads, the folder you told it where the downloads would be, and you want to touch a new file that's called dot mounted. Uh, and that's it. Then you'll go back to apps. And you'll go to the logs for your iCloud PD app. <clears throat> I just had to wait for a moment for it to actually load them. And then, oh, you can already see it's starting to pull in the list of the images that it needs to download. So first it will grab probably a very long list of all the image and video files that are on your iCloud account. Once it has a record of all those, it'll start downloading them one by one um, and save them all to the drive here. Uh, at that point, you can do whatever you want with it, of course, back them up or um, or use one of the other awesome apps that are on TrueNest Scale, like Photo Prism, to uh, browse photos and you know be able to look through them and organize them and stuff like that. Um, this script will, by default, run once per day. I believe it runs in the, I believe it runs 11 p.m. local time or something like that. It's a very configurable though. If you come back to the Docker image, the Docker Hub page, uh, you'll see the base uh, things that we set in there and then tons of other options. Um, you can have it notify you by uh, like Telegram or Discord or other things when the token's gonna expire because that cookie you set with it and that you create for it does have a limited life for security reasons on Apple's side. So eventually you do have to come in and do the reinitialize again. Um, but it's not usually for a while. I haven't encountered it yet while using it. So, um, but this notification will let you <laughs> have it send you a message to remind you when it's time to come renew that token. Um, and then there's also, of course, all kinds of other stuff you can configure like whether it converts your high definition photos, the HEIC photos that fo newer iPhone iOSs convert, uh, create, you can have it convert them all. There's also a command line scripts you can ha do to have it convert all of them if you download them first and then you decide later you want them all converted, things like that. Uh, so quite powerful, very cool stuff. Um, if you want though, you can just kind kind of continue watching the logs and see all the photos come in. And then once you once they start downloading, obviously you can go browse the folder and watch all your photos uh, download in. It all by default download them into folders like this, just like it's showing, um, which is really convenient, or I find it's convenient. But you can I think you can change the format in the Docker image settings as well. Um, but that's it. Now you have an iCloud sync for all your photos and videos on your TrueNest Scale server. Thanks for watching.